Right. I, I made a deal with the devil. Super Ego Records. Death Row Records. Death Row. Welcome to Death Row. Welcome to Death Row. Damn right. That's basically what they need to have when you walk in there. A man with a big cigar in there. Too. Welcome to the row. Welcome to the row. Welcome you know what to you the signed row. up for. Welcome to Death Row. All right. Anonymous. Bro, you're very vocal. And I, first, I want to appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate you uh, supporting the channel and everything. <laughs> But you're very vocal, man. You you um you you feel that some of the people that comes on the podcast and share their experience, you you feel that they just coming in just for content. What why do you say that? Well, you know, social media like the new school kids would say, they, they do it, they are chasing clout. They just want to be famous. They want somebody to know that they've been on YouTube and been interviewed. But a lot of them, when you hear their stories, cause I'm up there a lot, but a lot of them, they sound like they sap drivers. They can't drive with other companies. They pee and dirty. You know, they not just still doing drugs and smoking. And they they blame everything on Super Ego. But this is my third truck I didn't own. I didn't ran with multiple companies leasing my trucks on. And right now, we had a time where freight screwed up. And then the brokers, as you know, we all know, they've been playing dirty. They've been cutting rates. So all Super Ego do is do what the brokers do. They do the same thing. But if you don't know how to run a truck, but you come up here thinking that, for example, a lot of drivers think that these trucks are for free. Like, hey, man, Super Ego giving away trucks. I done had plenty of guys when I go up there. They say, hey, bro, you know, the trucks are, you know, it's zero down and they don't, they don't charge us nothing. Uh, and I and I said, well, how do they not charge us nothing when it's clearly you gonna be paying for something? They say, no, nah, this bull crap, man. This this, this bull crap. They don't, you know, they they ain't supposed to be charging us for anything. All right, thank you, brother. But yeah, I just I really don't understand it. You know, I hear some of the stories and I I just I, I'm like, this is crazy. This is crazy. I said, you you can't ain't nothing for free. And to be an owner operator, you have to pay for something. You got to pay for something. You can't be out here working in, you know, brand new truck. Most of these guys truck notes for seven and eight hundred dollars a week. And I'm like, well, why would you want a brand new truck? Well, you can get something older and you can make a little money. You can profit off of it. Because, as you know, being a lease operator, you're not really going to profit like this. So it just, it's kind of weird, man. Yeah. It's kind of weird, man. It's, I mean. So, Anonymous, man, what, what's your story with, uh, with Super Eagle? Well, I, me personally, man, I ended up getting a hold to another truck. I backed out the game when my Peterbilt went down. And um, I said, I ain't going to do it no more. You know, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. And the guy that I know, which he happens to be from over there, from Serbia, he stayed in the complex where I was staying at. And he said, well, you know, my buddy's selling trucks because he's getting rid of a lot of his manuals. And uh, guys don't know how to drive manual. A lot of them were restricted. So, you know, if you, you want another truck, let me know. I said, yeah, that, that wouldn't be a bad idea. You know, let me, let me, what he charged? Let me talk to him. So he gave me his number and everything. And he told me where he was located. And when I heard the name, I said, yeah, this is one of them companies that lease drivers. And these guys abandon trucks and get rid of trucks. So he probably getting a bunch of new trucks. I might go on ahead and get a good truck out of them. So I flew up there, walked around a lot. He had about 15 of them, good, nice manuals. And I said, yeah, let me go on and get one of them. Let me, let me get one with the best miles, the best maintenance on it. You know, he said, well, you know, I, I run my own insurance, too. You know, I got insurance, and I'll lease you a trailer if you want to lease a trailer. I said, yeah. So then he came with another deal. He said, well, you want to, you know, recover some stuff for me? I said, no, nah, I don't go recover nothing. He said, no, some loads. You know, I have people abandoning trailers and loads. I'll pay you for that. I said, well, why not? Shit, I, you know, I run my own freight on this trailer, run some of y'all freight. That's the deal we work out to be on the insurance, and I'm all for it. And that's pretty much how I got on with them. But as I noticed being up there, a lot of them guys, they don't, they don't, they get this idea that they coming to the bellhop. You know, there's going to be a butler waiting for them at the motel and they're going to have the Rolls Royce out there, the bed and breakfast. Everything's for free. They had one girl, I heard a story on there, which she used to say, they, they, at least they could have give us lunch, lunch on us. Don't nobody feed you lunch out here. We buy our own food out here. You know, we got to take care of ourselves. And, People getting the wrong idea. They thinking that they see all these ads. Besides Super Ego, there's tons of companies 
that's out there right now that does the same thing. Prime do it. JRC do it. A bunch of these big companies do it. And I know people that own trucks, and I know some lease owner operators. And nobody having a good time right now. So when everybody comes on there, some of the stories are like the kids that say they knew. I don't mean that, you know, I, how I said the, 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 the dyke sister, the bull dagger, the young girl that was on there one day. She said, um, you know, she wasn't told nothing. She was a new driver. She just coming into the game. She wanted to be an owner operator. That don't even sound right. When I first got my license, I wasn't there getting near a truck lot. I don't know nothing about this game yet. I ain't been in it long enough. So I wondered, I said, well, wow, you know, where are they coming from? How are they coming up here with the idea that I'm going to be an owner operator, but I don't even know how to drive? But I expect to go out here and make a bunch of money. Don't even sound right. And I, 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 you know, me personally, I know you run a, you run a good show, but I would have to ask these cats, are you a SAP driver? Can you prove to me that you wasn't in a SAP program? Because some of them sound like they probably was on SAP. Because when I go up there, 90% of them people SAP. When they see me pull up in that lot, they know I don't drive for them. Because my truck look different, my lettering on my door, and the only thing I got is lease two on the side of this truck. So... They wonder, where you come from? How you do that? I said, man, I bought my truck from up here. Oh, well, I'm trying to buy me one, too, but they playing. They playing. I said, well, what you mean they playing? You want a brand new truck? You're going to have to work for it because you know as well as I know. You go on a, a, a truck lot, you're not just going to walk off the lot with that truck. When I bought my first truck some years ago, I was broke. I could barely afford to insure that damn truck when I came off the lot. A couple of people had to help me out. So most of these guys think they're getting a free truck. They're going to hurry up and get this free, this good freight and make all this money, and they're going to become millionaires overnight, you know, big time on the operators. That ain't how it works, man. So they, you know, they really be going in on that company. I said, well, it's a bunch of companies out here like this. That's why I know some of these cats must be sapped because there's other companies you can go to if you got a clean record. Tons of companies. All right. So let's unpack this, man. You, you, you mentioned, uh, I agree with you. I, I, when I got my license, uh, leasing and becoming owner operator was the last thing going on my mind. But uh, Prime does it. I mean, Prime kind of finagled their new drivers into lease options. Uh, I, I talked to a few uh, few drivers over the air that was like brand new. After they got their license, they was talked into getting into a lease truck because the money was good they could pick their own loads and everything but let me flip the script on that they prime was there to help them as well i mean they if they get into a little finagle or something like that prime was at least i could say that they was there to to help their drivers the drivers that's coming over here with only four months of experience thinking, like you said, thinking that they're going to see the, 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 the gold at the end of the rainbow, they're not, they're not getting no help over there. So do you think that Super Eagle need to raise the experience criteria? Because I talked to a, a recruiter. And he says that they only require four months. Do you think four months is is enough experience for them to even to come over to a company like super eagle no it's not and i i believe you know just from talking to a couple of people that you know that a couple of them cats that work up there the basically the, the owner's whole idea is like this they got a bunch of people in these drug programs they coming out of fresh out of trucking school they popping positive at these companies they try to apply for so who else going to hire them? Now, we, now, like you said, a lot of them companies try to help out with these drivers. Super Ego look at it like this on the street level. Well, if ain't nobody else going to deal with you, who else going to deal with you? And that leads them, the, yeah, them in a bad position. they like, dang, I got nowhere else to go. That's why when they call your show, I hear them. I said, wait a minute, even some of these people look for me. I said, man, these folks out drivers. They, they up there because they got kicked out of another company. They didn't pop dirty. Like it's a couple of YouTubers that did pop dirty. They ain't in the truck right now. And they blaming everybody else but they self. You got to leave the drugs alone. You got to leave the alcohol alone. And then you can go drive for a good company. My driving record clean. My driving record clean, man. And I didn't mess with these people until I found out, hey, man, they got the trucks for sale for the low up there. I'm going to go get one. 
And I went and got one, and I made a deal with them. Well, I run into your insurance. You got dead cheap insurance? Yeah, I put Illinois tags on my truck. And the only deal was, hey, you run some loads for us throughout the week, and you get us some trailers here, and they recover some trailers for us. You do what you want to do. And that's what I do. Because I could run my own authority, but it'd be way more expensive to just run it. But Anonymous, you're, you, you're one of the, the lucky few, I, I guess people will say. You're you're one of the lucky few that you was able to get in and 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 get good with the company. I mean, you you pay for your own truck. You running up under you the truck is yours. So you just right. only thing you doing with them is running up under their own authority. These guys that's coming in, the truck is not even theirs. It's still still being financed through uh Super Eagle. And that- so what I mean, if your truck breaks down, because that's a consistence too, if your truck break down, you're able to say, hey, I can either fix this myself or I can take it to the shop and I know I can get my truck fits lickety split. Here these guys get their get these trucks, they break down and they like they 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 like hollering and hoopering and hollering for them to get it fixed or anything like that. Is there is there, maybe I'm wrong, but is there uh, op, uh, options for their trucks if in case it in case it breaks down? Are they able to come back to Chicago and 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 grab another truck, or what's what's the deal with that? Yeah, that's what Super Ego. One thing about their company, I found out when them boys' trucks break down, they'll let them come back to their yard and get another truck until they truck get fixed. And they still gonna charge you the same price it is to run your truck for that truck, and it's a rental truck. And I said, damn, you know, don't too many companies do this. Some companies gonna make you sit and wait till that truck get fixed, or you gonna come out the pocket and pay for a Rado or a Penske. And I said, well, that ain't bad. I mean, y'all just gotta learn how to run the freight and deal with it, because this company, you can tell most of us that's the owner operators. When you see a lot of super ego trucks going down the road, a lot of them don't be a part of ego or floyd or, or rocket you know them other companies they got we be lease operate we run we run in their trailers and i think that's what the the bad concept is like the one young sister on youtube one day she had a video saying that um owner operators get paid to um broadcast you know they logo on the trailer for them no we don't that's like me leasing a ride of a penske trailer they're not gonna pay me to because they name on side of the trailer no i'm gonna pay for that trailer every week or every month i have it. And a lot of them, you know, when they go out here in these trucks, they got to realize something. You get the truck, you in a hot seat. Somebody just got out that truck. It could be brand new. It may have 80,000 miles, but they got problems. Like, I got a scanner. I got a computer. I got, you know, all that, the laptop. So I have guys sometimes, when I be up there on their yard, if I like them, I'm kicking it, talking to them. I tell them, let me come on to your truck. Let's see what's wrong with you. And we're running. I tell them what to go in the shop and tell them. And a lot of guys feel like, well, it's a brand new truck, man. This ain't supposed to be like this. Every brand new truck got a problem. Ain't nothing, no, nothing gonna be guaranteed. And a lot of them run deaf. My truck don't run no deaf. I delete all my stuff. My stuff deleted. I don't have them issues. I got an older tractor truck. I'm an outlaw. I don't run by the book. I do what I do. You know, I, I just try to stay. I duck. I duck around them scale houses and I run certain lanes. And when I run, I usually run at night. And a lot of people out here they say, well, man, I don't. I don't like driving at night or certain times. Some of these guys I didn't ran into, you pick the trail up or go recover something for them. They say, man, I've been driving with them two weeks. I ain't seen no money. So I just said, bump it. I said, that ain't long enough. So if you go to a car lot or a, a truck lot and you go buy your own tractor trailer and you go running for two weeks, do you mean to tell me you're going to be rich? These are people that I feel like if you go buy a truck off a lot, you probably going to get it repoed the first month. When I bought my first truck, I had it happen to me. I thought it was a game. I planned with the people money. And well, one day my girl called me and she said, hey, man, your, your truck ain't parked over there. Those folks got your truck. It cost me 6000 to get that truck out of repo. And I learned a lesson from that day forward. That was my first truck. So I know from experience. And then I, I, I'm a mechanic. You know, I build engines. I got a Caterpillar engine I'm building right now. The one that blew out of my truck, a 346D can. So I, I'm going to swap that with this. I, I, it's, it's also the importance of knowing how to work on the truck. If you just become an owner operator and you think because you got a brand new truck, you're not a company driver no more. You know, whatever goes down on that truck, you got to keep eyes on that truck. You got to watch it. 
You got to listen to it. You can't just hop in and pop the brakes and drive off. I check my truck every day like I check my drawers. You you feel that a lot of these drivers, uh, and I I have mentioned it before. Uh, I I did a I did a uh, I did a podcast about uh, the young lady that was stranded, and she came over with the company mindset of running a truck as an owner operator. You you think you feel that they need to they need to stop with the company mindset and and try to. Uh, learn how to operate the truck properly, right? Right. They need to boss up. You gotta. You, if you if you in charge of this truck, you running this truck. You gotta know one thing. Like I heard people say, "Oh, I had a flat tire and I had to pay for it." Well, what you think you're gonna happen when you drive off the lot when you buy a truck? You can't go crying back to them saying, "Man, this truck caught a flat." Y'all gotta help me. No, they don't. You they, you, you big time on operator. Let's go. Game time. And I, that's why a lot of my buddies, they can't work with me or be with me. They want me all let me just crush your authority on and buy another truck, bro, and I'll run for you. Nope. You don't even know how to take care of your own car. If something go wrong with your car, you crying. You cussing out the dealer. You bought that car two years ago. The dealer ain't got nothing to do with it. Warranty over it. So when most of them guys on the lot, they tell them at Super Ego, the minute you leave the lot, something wrong with the truck, it's on you. But a lot of them know something wrong with the truck before they leave a lot. So why would you even take it? You got a chance right then and there to say, man, I'm done. I ain't messing with these people. I'm gone. And I done ran into many of them like that. Guys say, man, this ain't for me, man. I ain't, I ain't messing with these folks. I'm out of here. Yeah, and that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to sit over there and wait and wait. And then, okay, the truck halfway fixed. You get down the road, something go wrong with it. Man, I ain't making no money. Y'all told me, y'all promised me y'all would fix this. Well, it ain't going to be perfect. So you know where you at. So you got an option. You can either soldier it out, come back and get another truck and wait till that truck gets fixed, or you can move on. And a lot of them, it's almost like, why you can't go nowhere? Well, they sat driving. They own drawers. They got something on their record. They can't go to another company. So I'm, I, if I was in that position, I'm out. Like a lot of them dudes that go through that stuff, they got so many companies up here. And I always ask people, when well, you got felonies, well, you got a bad driving record. No, oh, man, I ain't. why don't you go try one of these tanker companies? Get your hazmat to do something. Like that one girl that said she was working on your interview, um, she said she started yanking tankers. She's been driving eight months. I don't know too many tanker companies that's going to hire you with eight months on your record. So you, you probably ain't driving at all right now. Super Ego to probably booty you. You're probably driving box trucks on drugs. People out here on drugs in the SAP programs. And then when they get booty from them companies and they come to a company like Ego or they go to Sweet Express, they got a PI and I. They got a couple of them companies. People complain about them. They say, man, they don't help me. They don't They don't help you. But you signing on to be a lease operator. You basically signing on to be a contractor. You're an independent contractor. And if something goes wrong with the vehicle, it's on you. So I, I, I look at it like if you don't have the money, you don't have the money, that's okay. But just know what you're getting into. Because you can't feel like, well, I don't have the money, but I need help. They're going to help me when something go wrong. It don't work like that. It just don't. I don't know a company I've leased with, with my trucks that when I had a flat tire, they helped me. Nope. I had to get on that phone on the side of the road and call road service, service myself. You know what I mean? Or if there's a mechanical issue I couldn't fix, I got to call road service. That come out of my pocket. And if the company ain't, ain't going to say, well, since you lease on us, we're going to help you out. See, Prime do them drivers like that over there because they run a straight-up program. I remember when I got out of penitentiary, Prime wouldn't hire me. My first trucking company was Western Express. That was back in 2015. Prime wouldn't touch me. A couple of companies wouldn't. And I only went to the pen for armed robbery. I was young. I was 17. I got out at 30. So a lot of the cats, they, they, they only can go but so many places, and they don't want to just deal with it and say, well, let me man up and let me do this. Let me try this. Because most people want a new truck. All them trucks they get over there at Ego, Man, I could send you some videos. I'd be in that yard, pick a part. I go get parts for other drivers that need parts off they, them trucks out there. They got so many abandoned, wrecked, destroyed. You know, they, these guys, just the only thing they want to do when they come there, they want to slap an um, uh, invert on the truck, put a TV in there, microwave, refrigerator. And I'm like, damn, why are you doing all this? Because you probably turn this truck in next week. Because you're going you're gonna to spend a little bit of money you got to decorate the inside like a house. Bring your girlfriend. A lot of them want to bring their girlfriends up there with them, and they think they're going on tour. And then a week or two later, the truck abandoned somewhere. We got to go get the trailer with the load on it. He didn't gave up. So a lot of them not ready for it. And like you said, four months, nah. 
But ego got that mindset. They know what to do. They say, hey, man, look, we'll take you. But you're going to have to deal with our shit. You know, you're just going to have to deal with it. Ain't nobody else going to deal with shit. I, I said that I, I said that plenty of times in the past. Uh, if you had some situations on your jacket, only only a few companies that's going to give you the opportunity. But when you get in, you're going to have to know that they're going to look at you like, hey, we're giving you an opportunity. How long have you been working for me, yet? Over a year? You like what you do? I got no complaints, man. I make good money. But are you happy, though, dog? I guess, yeah. You guess. What if I told you today I can make you a rich man? What you think, man? I'll say fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you right. the one that messed up. If you wanted that, yep. if you wanted that good job, then you wouldn't have messed up. You, now, now you over here to us, so you you gotta take it, you gotta take it for what it's worth. Um so anonymous, man, you the truck is yours. So what about the well, what about the computer system? Uh, are are you are you written their their computer systems, their ELDs, or or do you have nah, your I rent own? Their, I, I, nah, I, I rent theirs because they do things outlaw style. So whenever you need hours, you gonna get them hours. I I had a state trooper pull me in one night and told me I know what that trailer means. What, how many hours you got on that book? Let's see if you're honest. And I said, sir, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't cut this damn book on all day. He started laughing. He said, you know what? I'm mad like we didn't have this conversation. This, this was out of Kentucky. And he let me go because I run a clean ass truck, a nice truck. But due to that trail I was pulling, he wanted me to pull on in. So they know what they're doing over there. And, and if, you don't, if you're not built for it, don't, don't mess with it. You, they don't make them boys drive. These guys be wanting to book crazy loads. I had one of them guys tell me, he, he wanted to go to California and then try to run up to Oregon. And he was going to do it all in two days. Man, that man quit. He called my phone. He quit that night. Talking about he can't drive no more. I can't be doing this. This is illegal. I said, bro, you say you can run hard. Oh, man, I can't do it. Oh, you ain't ready. And that's what I think a lot of them get twisted. They go run around and telling everybody, oh, I run hard. Because it sounds good to be an outlaw. It sounds good to, to run hard. But that's the only way you're going to make money if you dedicate it to the craft. It ain't a job. It's a lifestyle. Because when I run, I don't care nothing about Like the book right now, it ain't even on. I'm waiting for nightfall. When nightfall come, I'm bailing down the pike. I'm out of here. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I know where to play and how to play. I grew up under truckers. My father was an outlaw trucker. So I, I know how to go about doing it. And like I said, when I got pulled into Kentucky that night, I knew I was busted. I said, hey, check this law book. I'm done. He just wanted me to be honest. I said, you damn right. <laughs> it is what it is. And he didn't give a damn because at the end of the day, he know it's a lot of y'all out here running out law. That's how you're going to make your money. Because right now, the way freight is, yeah, if you ain't running, like a lot of people been complaining. I got a buddy of mine. He's at JRC, a flatbed company out of uh, Connecticut. He's a lease operator. He ain't making no money. But he said they want me to run illegal, man. They tell me they don't care. They'll reset my law. I said, well, bro, that's how you're going to make money. That's why there's a big stipulation. A lot of these drivers want to be the big time outlaw owner operator, the Peter Bill with the loud pipes and the jakes, but them boys running outlaw. A lot of them running outlaw. And you, you can't, you can't come out here and expecting to run two, three hundred miles and then you're going to stop at the truck stop and lounge around, take a nap. And I get up tomorrow and I'll run a little bit more. You got to run all damn night. You got to run the base. You damn, you pretty much at your destination. Me personally, I don't, I don't mess around. I get out here and I do what I got to do. That's how I make money. People always wonder how you got all that money, how you got trucks and you rebuilding motors. And I said, well, man, I, I work. I run my truck seven days a week sometimes. Then I shut it down for a day or two and I go right back out. And when I shut it down, I'm usually at the gym working out, pumping iron, or I'm over there working on the engine because I like to rebuild them. I got that cat I'm finna rebuild. So I just, I, you know, I'm dedicated, man. It's a craft. And a lot of guys that come over there, I think that'd be the misconception. You know, they look at them law books and they say, well, hey, man, they making us run out of hours. They're not making you run out of hours. They reset their clock if you need be. Because most of that freight over there, dry freight. A lot of them boys ain't getting them reefer trailers. A lot of the owner operators got them reefer trailers. And if you got a reefer trailer running with them, you got to be an outlaw. Because the minute you start crying, they tell you, no, nah, you can't keep the reefer. They, we go get them trailers all the time. They, they abandon them, they leave them. 
one guy we went to go get it, he was cleaning his stuff out of the truck. And uh, the guy was robbing me to go get the truck. And we asked him, well, why the hell? He said, man, I ran reefer with them a couple of months. They want me to run all night. And I said, bro, that's, I ran reefers in my Peterbilt. I know that, that frozen freight ain't no joke. So for you to want to make money, yeah, they ain't going to let you keep that damn trailer. You're going to have to go get a dry trailer because dry trailer, you can afford to be late here and there and play games, but not with them reefers. Nah, it's, that, a, yeah, it's a sad situation, man. Nah, that reefer freight, you 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 definitely can't can't be late with that. You you be late with that, then you gotta be worked in and and sometimes yeah. you gotta be you you gotta reset the uh reset the appointment. Sometimes you had to take the whole freight back. <laughs> to, yep. Reject it, it's reject. reject and you don't even get paid for it. You you don't even get paid for it, would you? If they reject Nope, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there with my own truck when I ran it on that Peterbilt. I ran refrigerated freight for three years on that truck till I blew that engine. And, um, oh, yeah, I had my times. I get at that gate, and I can't even cuss nobody out. It's my fault. All my fault. Now I got to explain to the broker, and now I got to pay a fee and all that. And damn, they lose my little, you know, my little contract of connection with them. So, yeah, a lot of them come over there. When you see them reefer trailers for Ego on the highway, the majority of us own operators running because they know how to run it. You know, guys that have been running for a while that's dedicated. But when you see that company driving that ego truck, yeah, look out. He's gonna be abandoning that trailer real soon. Cause that boy Lance they they have over there the uh I call him the poster child. He need to be on the side of a trailer with a picture smiling. His ass, he runs um uh reef and freight and he do damn good, but he know how to run out long. He don't screw around, he live out that truck. You know, and he's from out of Florida, so you know he gotta run hard. Like he told me one day, man, I did here from Georgia, I go ahead and Deadhead into Georgia and go get my load sometime. And you, you, you got to know how to run. Them guys, I done ran into a couple of guys, they'll, they'll sit. Man, they're not paying. I'm sitting. I'm not taking that load. I'm like, well, damn, you got to get out of there. Yeah, you're going to just take it to get out. I be having to take loads to get out. I call some of my broker buddies and say, hey, man, what you got over here? I got an empty trailer. I just dropped these people load off. I need something on my, my end now. And they'll find me something. It may not be the greatest. I'll take it. And we'll find something else and bump it back up. And that day after that or whatever, then I call one of the ego dispatches over there in Serbia, tell them, hook me up, hook me up, put me on. And they, they give me a load, I, I shoot back out, I go do my thing, because that's my deal with them. I pull a couple of loads for them, and I do my own thing on the side. And I, when I'm in Chicago, usually, I'm up there recovering. I'm grabbing trailers, I'm going to pick up a trailer from Wisconsin or something, somebody in the band or something in Ohio, and I'm just bringing it back to the yard in Bolingbrook. But I mean, it, yeah, it's... um. Like you said, the contra- super the controversial company, man. But it's a lot of them out here. They just a lot of people ain't coming out of the closet because they scared they get fired. <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, so you you said you was pulled in in Kentucky. I I was pulled in recently in Kentucky. That's crazy. But yep. as far as as far as Super Ego goes, the 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 trailer. All automatically marked when you, when you go through these uh, way stations. All, automatic. Do they got? Yes. Do you guys got best pass over there? Like, do you guys got the pass? No. That, uh, no. Oh. No. Ain't none of that. Yeah. You, you when you pulling this trailer with ego on the side of it, you hot boy, real hot boy. They know you. Like like my man said. He, he said I'm real familiar with this trailer. I said, oh shit. I said I already know it's about to happen. Yep, and that's, I mean, a lot of people, they, they don't have the passes, so you're going to either do one or two things. You're going to play by the book or you're going to duck. That night, he just happened to be sitting at the edge of the scale high, and he went to flashing his light, his, um, what do you call it, that light on the door, that, that spotlight. And I said, damn, he want me to pull in there. God damn, I thought they were closed, which they were supposed to be, but they were doing some slick shit. And they, he saw that trailer. He knew what it was. He knew what it was. And I, I got to give my man, you know, his props because I can't lie. I mean, I, I thought I was gone. And I said, damn, he going to check the law, but I might well be honest with him. And he said, I'm going to just go on and act like we ain't even had this conversation. I said, damn, this is horrible. This company here, they no joke. These boys hot. But the police know. Because they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't knock a lot of them off. I didn't had to go in the scale houses and get trailers before. Especially down south, Mississippi. And when I pull in one of them in, in Mississippi, the lady... Had a, a guy already in there, and she was like, well, hold on, let me check something real quick. Let me check your ID and stuff. And I didn't have no hours then. But she didn't want to check my hours or nothing. She just wanted to make sure I was the right guy they called that was going to pick the trailer up. It was a fully loaded trailer. Someone abandoned it. 
And I guess they put him out of service. And he he got mad and dropped the trailer when you know the scale house closed and left. So they were looking for him. But I mean, yeah, man, it's a it's definitely one of them companies. You got to run hard, and you got to know you got to know that you want it. If you want this big brand new Kenworth like they got over there, the big uh, Peterbilt. I don't even call them Peterbilt. I call them aerodynamic trash car because pack car junk. But um, you got to know how them engines running. Because I gave advice to a couple of brothers over there, and that's they still around. They're trying to be done paying their trucks off, and they just running hard. And they, they into that engine. That's what I always tell guys. I learned that from my first truck. Get into the engine. Don't worry about the outside. Keep it clean, but don't worry about all the pretty, the inside, and the refrigerators. Because my trucks right now, the one I'm running, I don't have no refrigerator. I don't have no inverter. I don't idle my truck because I learned about these engines. I know how to build them, break them down, rebuild them. That's the most important thing. As long as you, you can take care of that engine, you're going to be all right. And a lot of people come over there, they don't want to take care of the engine. They just want the truck to run. And if something goes wrong, they want Ego to pay for it. It's crazy, man. Man, super Ego. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now, let's, let's just make this absolutely clear. You leased on with them. You're not... Uh, lease option to own or nothing like that. This is your truck and you're just leased right. on to their authority and that's it. Right. I, I made a deal with the devil. Super Ego Records. Any artists out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star, come to Death Row. I signed a Super Ego Records. Death contract. Row Records. <laughs> <laughs> Death Row. Night. Welcome to Death Row. <laughs> Welcome to Death Row. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. That's basically what they need to have when you walk in there. A man with a big cigar in there. So welcome to the road. Welcome to the road. You welcome know what to you the signed road. up for. Welcome to Death Row. What you signed up for. <laughs> That's real. If this was a record label, this would be the most controversial record label in the industry, bro. Facts. So <laughs> Facts. I, I, yeah, the death, row, yeah I, the death Row of trucking. God damn it, man. Yeah. You've been stealing from me for months. Why stop now? Tape costs, studio time, musicians. This motherfucker spent 250 grand on an artist that ain't even mine. Super <laughs> 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 ego. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the new nickname, man. We got to give him a nickname, a handle, man. The Death Row is short. Death Row is more than a label, it's a family. Death Row yeah, of man. Trucking. That's 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 yep. that's gonna be the title. Death Row of Trucking. Yeah, man. Death Row stays Death Row. Hey. Um. Yep. So you you are one of the successful ones over there, and I do appreciate you coming on and and sharing your story with us because I I I, I get it, bro. I. I, I get it, man. People come in my comment session. They all are like, well, why do you talk to these people? And why you don't talk to nobody that's this, that, and the third? I'm like, hey, they reach out to me. I I, I feel like this, man. I'm, I'm like this, see. I'm not transparent. I, I, I'm not going to tell you how much I'm making, where I'm, where I'm shitting at who I'm eating, who I'm fucking. I'm not doing none of that. And I know a lot of the guys that are successful because there, there, there are successful guys with Super Eagle. And as you said, a lot of them run outlaw. What is that which gives me joy? Baseball. <laughs> there he stands alone. But in the field, what? Part of a team. They're not gonna. They're, they're not gonna come out and be like, "Yeah, man, I'm doing this, that, and the third over there." No, they keeping it to themselves. Like, no, nah, man, no, nah, man, yep. we 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 cool. But I only only a handful will come out and say, "Hey, I'm I'm doing the damn thing." But what do you? But listen, anonymous man, what what do you got for the naysayers though? Because they're gonna. They're going to come in the comment session and be like, you all cap and they super ego this well, and super ego that. Well, what, what do you got to say to them, man? Because you, you know they're coming when, when, when this podcast go live. I think since you've been dipping in my shit for the past five months, 
make it about $5,000 on the side, give or take a few, equal up to about 25 G's. See, I'm gonna cut out this middle, man, and I'm gonna give you the whole 50,000. Oh no, Pat, man, I know I fucked up, man, I know I fucked up! Come yeah, on, yeah. I know, you did. Come on, man. Please don't do this to me, man. man but see, today we got an agreement, on, and a deal is a deal. Hell no. oh, see, Ed, I want you to be my right-hand man now, because I'm taking your left. Well, what, one thing about a lot of the naysayers, a lot of the naysayers, it's easy to sit back on the computer or be in your boss man truck and make crazy comments. But when you run your own equipment, and you successful at doing it, it ain't, it, it's, that's all the proof in the pudding you need. Like I said, this is my third truck I didn't own. So I, I don't even, when people go to talking crazy, like when I go to the gym, people like that. We sit in the sauna the other night, me and another owner operator was in there talking. You got this one know it all in there. You know, he ain't never owned a truck. And we just shaking our head like, you don't know shit about trucking. Because if you knew anything about trucking, you wouldn't be driving your boss man truck. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Ain't nothing wrong with working for a company because I didn't work for plenty of companies. But once you get into the, the craft of owning, knowing how to build and rebuild and you paying insurance and you paying IFTAs and IRPs on truck registrations, every, you know, you know the business, you know what it takes. But the naysayer, oh, no, nah, the naysayer ain't going to know what it takes because the naysayer is sitting at home on the couch watching your interview. He probably on SAP. Nobody ain't going to hire him, and he couldn't drive for two weeks and see a decent paycheck. So, yeah, he don't know nothing about trucking. You can't be a lease operator or owner operator. Even when I bought my first truck, I was broke. My first few months was hell because I'm paying this back, paying this all, paying. It was hell. It, it's no joke to own a truck. You got to be in tune with yourself to own one. A lot of guys just want to lease it, and they feel like, well, since I'm leasing it, like you say, the company driver mindset. You can't have a company driver mindset if you're trying to become a boss. That just ain't going to work. You can't feel like, okay, well, somebody going to hold my hand until I pay this off. No, because that's what Prime and them do. But Prime and them, you got to walk a tight line at Prime. Ain't no deleting nothing. Ain't no running out of hours. Super Ego, they do all that shit over there. They don't give a damn if you deleted your truck. Excuse my language, but they don't care if you deleted your truck over there. I know a couple of guys, I did it for them. And they running like the, the few that I was talking about earlier, they running like crazy. Because they ain't having no issues out their truck. You got to do what you got to do. And a lot of people tell you, well, I, I don't want to drive a deleted truck. That's a big fine. Well, you got to pay the cost to be the boss. If you got the money, you ain't worrying about it. They can pull you over and shut you down. And you can you can un plug it back up, and then guess what? When, when Smokey leave, I'm, I'm unplugging it again and delete it again. I mean, that's just my money. That's how I roll. So, yeah, for the naysayers, they gotta understand something. If you come out here to be a trucker, you cannot come out here expecting no one to hold your hand. You can't expect a brand new 2024 truck. You can't expect for them to pay for everything when you get the orientation, because when I went in there to buy my stuff. I went, I went straight to the back, to the office, to the boss man back there, to one of the head guys. And then I went over to safety to get my insurance stuff, and I got up out of there. And nobody knew what was going on. I jumped in the truck and hauled in. I was gone. Boom! I was out. But a lot of guys go up there to be lease operators. They got to go through the process. And I hear the interview, they talking about how people, man, people be sitting in there a couple of days. They got to fix them trucks. Somebody didn't abandon it. They leave trucks out in the yard so people sleep in them when they get there. Or you can go to one of them little shabby motels or if you got some money, which I've never seen a bunch of broke, I'm sorry to say it, but a bunch of broke adults. They come to a trucking company with no money, no clothes. They got an L.A. fitness over there. You can pay $10 and go up in there and take a shower. I done seen some women come up in there. They sit around there for days, don't take no bath. I say, dang, I done recovered this trailer, came back. I'm going over to the gym. This woman's still sitting in here. She ain't wiped her butt. They worrying about a truck. I said, oh, no, nah, these people are crazy. Most of them, you can tell they on drugs. They on drugs. It's like half of them in there, they come in there. When they get dark, they got a liquor store over there by, uh, it's a grocery store, Mariano, right across the street. As soon as it get dark, they start running to that damn liquor store. I said, look at these folks. They are, they still up here getting drunk and how they, they ain't up here to work. They all on sap, and it just, they complain. So, yeah, for the naysayers, the naysayers are, yeah, they are part of that group. 
you got to realize a lot of them think people cap because they cap themselves. As they would say, they, they capitalize and they cap it. A lot of them, they mess themselves over. And you, you got to get out the drawers. You can't, you can't. Like, it's one guy that I knew, not to drag it on, uh, from the Carolinas. This young brother came up there. He still was smoking dope. He going to tell me one day, man, shit, we can, uh, later on, we can cruise around the block in my truck and burn it down, bro, if you want. Because he was out there helping me pull a bump off a truck for a guy to put it on another truck. And I said, bro, I don't smoke. He said, shoot, I be burning down. I stay burning. I got that U-Pass, man. I ain't worried about them folks. So the next day, this fool go take a drug test. They detected the U-Pass, which a lot of these places starting to detect it. I think it came up inconclusive. So he said, man, something happened. I don't know what's up, but I'm going to pee again, pee again tomorrow. So the day before I left, he went up there, peed again. He blew it again. He got mad at Super Ego. He said they set him up to be in the sap. He was talking about he was done driving. He going back to Carolinas. He threw. I said, well, you seem like a good dude. Let me call my partner up north. He got a couple of box trucks. He be needing drivers to run some Amazon relays. And, oh, man, I ain't trying to drive no more trucks. I really just smoke my weed, bro, and chill. Just get me a regular job. I said, damn, bro, so you spent all your money on that piece of paper, that plastic in your pocket. That costs a lot of money to earn, bro. You willing to get that up to go sit at home and smoke reefer and work a regular job? You crazy. Some people don't need to be up there. Some of them, it's a lot of them that come up there, man. I, I, trust me. I, 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 I told one guy that uh, recovered trucks. He recovers the trucks a lot, like far as when people, you know, they fly them out, they send them to different states, he go recover them. And I told him, you need to do a documentary called Undercover Recovery and just show people how bad it is. Because some of them trucks, when they go recover them, people didn't smoke dope in them, smoke crack in them. They didn't got drunk all in them, peed all up in them. And I'm like, well, who in the world are they hiring? Why are they hiring people like this? Most of these drivers be sap drivers. Like the guy, one of the guys, that, one of the head guys that run the place up there, he told me, he said, we got so many drug addict guys. You give them a job. They go abandoned truck, you find a truck, it's drug paraphernalia, alcohol bottles everywhere. I said, good God. Some of them don't need to be in the game. They just don't. Mm. That's crazy right there, man. Woo. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, that's why I say when, when you give when you give interviews, man, I listen, I watch your channel, and I be rolling. I said, let me reach out. I gotta get in touch with them because a couple of them faces look for me. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, they some sap drivers. They lying, talking about they some new drivers and they ain't got no experience. Well, you know, daggone well, you know where the internet, you know where YouTube at, you know how to Google. So I know you didn't Google the company, you didn't watch all the videos pop up on it. Why did you go there? You know what I mean? Is it's a reason. So yeah, a lot of them, yeah, they're not ready to be, you know, on operators, and a lot of them on drugs, man. A lot of them, a lot of them people, like one lady I heard you interviewing. Like I said, I don't mean to, you know, speak bad about nobody. I don't know nobody, but she said she had been in an accident, and then that, you know, that company she didn't work for them no more. She didn't really want to get into it. She went over to Super Ego. Okay, well, what you hiding? Why you can't go work for that company or another company? Why you had to go to Super Ego? Because you probably had drugs, alcohol in your system. That's why you had a rape. It kind of sense. It's just like you're not gonna go work for this shiesty guy up the block if you know his history. When they got 20 other guys on the block, they got good rapport. Why am I going to go work with this shiesty guy? Because I done done something shiesty too. We all shiesty, so got to go work with the shiesty guy. That's basically what that boiled down to. Because I, I, I trust me, I hear them interviews. I hear them interviews. I say, good Lord. I say, listen to these folks. God, look, Anonymous. they ain't the only company out here. Anonymous, man. <laughs> Came in, sat down with the lockout men and shut it down. What do you what do you think uh, going into the future, man? Because I mean, controversial company Super Eagle don't look like it's going anywhere. Uh, I, I I know that class action lawsuit is looming, oh. but but uh, <laughs> what, what do you what, what do you think uh, what do you think they need to need to do to I, I don't know turn it around. I know I some guess. Charlie. Ain't you supposed to be on death row? No, I ain't supposed to be on death row. Hey, I got him out. Well, no, nah, I know somebody who got a lawyer right now. They down in Atlanta. I ain't going to put them out there. Because he, he driving for Coca-Cola now. He does a little drop and hook back and forth like down to Florida and night running. 
But um, his lawyer, he went on ahead and let it go. His lawyer told him, companies like this are the only companies that probably will survive during this trucking recession. Because how do you say it? He said they they the way they run they show they always gonna be in business because they're not only a trucking company they're a leasing company and they're a brokerage and they have multiple LLCs they got they they like a drug dealer with twenty different addresses you never know where he gonna be at he always gonna be in business so the feds can shut one spot down tomorrow and he gonna have ten more running so that 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 lawsuit they got with them people the best advice I can give people hey man. See if you can get some money out of the deal. But if you read that contract and don't be so quick to jump in that truck, you you already, you basically signed, you signed the contract. That Big Red said on the Temptations, oh, nigga, you're going to sign this contract. You know, and once they sign it, it's signed. You know, they they signed it. And I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't understand why most people don't read it, you know, and um they don't look at what's going on. I've seen the contract, you know, I've shared it. And um, I'm like, wow, you know, these dudes don't even read. They think they're getting 88%. They're not really getting 88% of that load. They ain't no damn way. But if you know what's going on, you know you're not getting 88% of no damn on load. They come over there basically as a lease operator and looking at the contract like they running their own authority. Like, I get 88%. Oh, man. Nah, don't work like that. And then as far as fuel rebates, you know, with all that stuff, people say they're going to sue because they took money from them. They don't give you no fuel rebate. That ain't in the contract. You, here's the thing, bro. Knowing legally, do you think Super Ego would go into business and run things the way they're running it? If they knew they would get sued, they would have been sued and knocked off a long time ago. That man got a million lawsuits. You remember the big accident that just happened in South Carolina? And uh, that girl, rest in peace, of the brother and the sister that got killed in that Peterbilt, and that driver was coming the wrong way or something. It was derating, and they ran out the lane, or they hit him. But that right there, that 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 LLC they got, man, shoot, they got a new one after that. They got some more LLCs. They not bull crapping around. They shut them LLC. Yeah, they got the money. They shut the LLC down real quick, and they go get another one. They and, and that's how these big mega carriers, Swift, Jerry Moore is in them. He got his own insurance. That's how you stay in business. Super Ego, they got their own insurance. You know, they are not dealing with nobody insurance. They got their own lawyers. Just like on, on, on uh, uh, coming to America, the boys got his own money. They got their own money. Yeah, I met the owner, the Domino's Pizza driver. I met the owner before when I went to get my truck. And I knew off the muscle, these boys are smart. That's why they got multiple LLCs. There's plenty of companies out here that have multiple LLCs. But the problem with that is they're not a lot of foreign entities. That's how they get caught up. And then they're not plugged with the right people. Like if you look at Swift, Jerry Moore is they on Digby, Navajo, they bought out Central. Cause that's what I got right now, nothing. A million dollar a week business. Reduce the fucking rubbles. Ah! 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 Nino. They got a gang of companies. Like Jerry Moore has got and his wife got his hands they hands in everything. But they got the right people under their belt. And that that's the same with Super Ego. They got the right people under their belt, but they also a foreign entity. They know where, hey, our money go real long. Our money go all the way around the globe. We'll never shut down. They can't, they, they can't get enough lawyers to shut these people down. I could be wrong. Anything could happen. But from the way, like I said, my boy, his lawyer explained to him, it ain't even worth going to court for. What you suing for? Did you read the contract? You must have a problem with mathematics, Ronnie, because this shit don't add up. <laughs> a class action on something that really that's in the contract. They telling you what they're doing. Because people say, well, they're scalping off the rate. they scalping. Everybody's scalping. I just got into it with a broker this morning about their crap. You want to pay me a couple of grand to go here? And I'm looking at a low boy. They got one going the same way, paying more than that. So how much are you taking? You know, and that ain't even with you, do you go? That was with a whole other broker. So I, a lot of people, I just, the advice I got for them, man, you know, they need to read. Don't be so quick to get in the truck. That little bond that ego be giving them with the insurance papers and all that in it, they need to sit down and read that stuff before they go anywhere. Because when I'm up there, trust me, everybody's in a rush. They just ready to get in the truck and get on the road. I don't see nobody read nothing. They get them bonds, throw them in the truck, and they're ready to go. Or they ready to throw the truck in the shop. It's got to get fixed. I need tires. I'm like, man, y'all don't even read this stuff. Y'all just trying to sign and hurry up and get in the truck and go. 
that's sad, you know. And I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I, I look at it. If it's a profession or something you like to do, you know, you you gonna be into it. Like once when I got my first truck, I had to sit down and read stuff. I had to really like doing the IRP and all that crap and the, if the the fuel taxes, man, I had to go. I still go through all this mess. And it's just a little bit easier leasing on to a bigger carrier instead of running my authority right now. And then when things crank back up, yeah, I run my authority. And I got a buddy of mine that's in Chicago. He don't like to really go nowhere, but he'll run some, you know, some Midwest up there. So I said, well, cool. I might buy another truck off of him, but he ain't got no more sticks. He got all them automatics up there. And I don't, I don't run automatics. I had one automatic. That was my first truck, and I'd never buy another one. I bought that out, shout out to Tidewater Transit out of Tennessee. I bought that from them boys, and that truck gave me problems until I got rid of it. And, um, yeah, this, I mean, you know, I just, it, I enjoy talking with you, man, about this because, I, like I said, I've been watching your videos for a while, and I said, man, somebody got to put a rest of this crap. I, like pr- I, say, I appreciate it, everybody man. Everybody that see us, man. Yeah, everybody that see them trailers just know a lot of us don't work for Super Ego. Or twin, or tri time, or Floyd, or Rocket, or Pigeon, man, they got all kind of damn company names over there. They, they, like I said, it's a big record label, but a lot of producers, a lot of producers on the roster. They got all kind. They probably got a new one. I pull up in their yard next week. You probably be another LLC on the dump. All right, bro. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for uh, for the conversation, man. Any artists out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star, come to Death Row. White Moon, G was on the streets trying to consume some skirts for the E so I could get some phones rolling in my ride, chilling on the line.